Hi, friends in Artland. Welcome to The Seb Duke Show. The show where we talk about art marketing and mindset. My name is Seb Duke, and I'm an artist and art marketing consultant. I'm here to help artists like you market your art better to reach the right audience and enhance your mindset in order to become more productive and efficient in whatever tasks you tackle. That's why I bring you inspiring and practical advice to help guide you on your path to artistic greatness. And I do this because I truly believe that all art deserves to be seen, and that starts with yours. Now we're about to start episode 26, Six Reasons Why I Hate Room Mockups. So I was going to record an episode about the best books I read last year, because the last two episodes of The Seb Duke Show, I've been talking about the most important concepts that I've learned back in 2020, and I was going to do a recap of the books that had the biggest impact on me. And you know what? I was halfway into writing it, and I realized I'm not enjoying this one bit. I'm having, like, a horrible, horrible time writing this episode on the best books I read last year. And you know what? I've recorded 25 episodes of this show so far, and for the first time, like, I wasn't having fun writing an episode, like, at all. I was dreading it, I was dragging my feet, so I asked myself, why am I not enjoying this? And the thing is, I realized I'm not a book reviewer. I mean, I read a lot, I absorb a lot of information as I'm reading, and I think I'm good at making it my own and then presenting it to you in a palatable way. But summarizing books, telling other people what a book is about, I don't like that at all. And you know what, like, I've been really struggling to write that episode where I was trying to summarize my favorite books of 2020, and in the end, after two weeks of trying to write it, hours of sitting in front of the computer to decide what books I was going to talk about, trying to write about them in a way that's not boring, making sure that I'm not misconstruing the points of the book, it wasn't flowing right. And in the end, after two weeks, I just realized that's not a good idea for me. I'm sure there's other people who are great book reviewers and they enjoy doing that. That's not me. It's not something I enjoy doing, like, at all. It made me feel like I was back in college writing an essay for a teacher. and I don't like that. So in the end, I just decided to ditch the episode. And maybe there's a lesson for you somewhere in there. You know, sometimes in life, when something's not working, you just gotta take it to the barn and shoot it. Sometimes you gotta know when it's time to give up on something. You know, learn how to quit. Especially when it has, like, no real long-term impact. I mean, it would have been cool to record it, but in the end, is that something that you were actively waiting for? Probably not. You didn't even know I was working on it anyways. So yeah, sometimes in life, if it's low stakes, you gotta know what to quit and when to quit it. Long story short, after I spent weeks trying to write an episode that I was really hating, and I hated hating that episode, you know, I record this podcast to talk about stuff that I enjoy talking about in a format that I enjoy. And I think that's going to be sort of a new heuristic for the way I approach my podcast. If I'm not liking an episode I'm writing, then I'm going to dump it. As simple as that. I'm here to have fun. If I'm not having fun, not doing it. But you know, in life, there's things that are fun to hate, and there's things that are not fun to hate. Writing that episode about my favorite books I read in 2020... Yeah, I hated hating that. But there are some things that are, like, fun to hate. For example, when I was in high school, it was fun to hate the Backstreet Boys. Like, you know, when you hate something and it's kind of cathartic, 
I hated them because they were a rival. All the girls wanted to date the guys in the Backstreet Boys. But I was like, hey, I'm right here, I'm available. So yeah, hating them was fun. Because, you know, like, I was fully conscious that they were never going to date those guys, and I was right there. It's just like, it was amusing to hate on them. Some things are fun to hate, some things are not fun to hate. And here's something that I actually love to hate, and it's room mock-ups. Holy hell do I hate room mock-ups. Like, with a passion. They genuinely get me irrationally angry when I see them. But before I get into why I hate them, if you don't know what a room mock-up is, let me tell you what it is. It's a concept, an app or a website that allows you to upload your art and then place it into a virtual room. So first you take a picture of your art and then you upload it and it's going to be placed into a pre-designed room. There's different types of rooms with different types of aesthetics, from mansions to contemporary homes to cottages to nurseries. Anything you can imagine, it probably already exists. And maybe you didn't know about those and you're hearing this and you're thinking, holy shit, what a great idea. And on paper, it is. Because you know what? It's easy, it's simple, and it's cheap. So what's not to like about it? Well, I'll tell you the six reasons why I hate room mock-ups with a passion. So let's get started. Reason number one, they're not unique at all. If it's easy, if it's simple, if it's cheap, that means that a lot of people are using them. It's never going to have your unique signature. It just has the app's look and feel to it, so it's not unique to you. You're adopting the app's aesthetic. And if, like, 10,000 other artists are using the app, congratulations, you look like 10,000 other artists out there. Is that something you want? I know it's not something I want. Reason number two, it doesn't always really fit your own aesthetic. If I take a look at your feed and I see posts where you're using a room mock-up ad versus posts where you're not using room mock-ups, it looks kind of cheap. They stick out like a sore thumb, like they don't really belong. Stick to your own aesthetics. A room mock-up is not a part of your aesthetic. It's not an extension of your art. It's a crutch that allows you to create low-effort content. Reason number three, they always look kind of artificial. A lot of those room mock-ups are created digitally, so there's something a bit off about the way they look. It just looks fake. And I don't think art sells well using fake settings. Reason number four, the lighting never feels right. So you take a picture of your art and you upload it in the app or through the website. Now that app is going to have its own light source. Say the light will be coming from the right, which is going to create some shadows on the left. But very often, the light source from within the app is not going to match the light source from the way you photographed your art, and there's just something, once again, that feels slightly off about it. Reason number five. The picture grain from the art never matches the room mock-up's picture grain. Say you're taking your pictures with an iPhone 8. Your picture is going to have a specific compression algorithm to it, but the Room Mockup app is also going to have a grain to it, and they're not going to match. And the thing is, when you take a look at the art integrated into the Room Mockup, it always looks like it doesn't belong there. It always looks a little bit fake. Let's be honest here. Reason number six, it's the laziest kind of content creation. 
It's so low effort, I personally can't relate to it. If I see that you're using room mockups, it's just telling me and the world that you're using it as a shortcut and that you're not investing time in creating actual good looking content for your art. You're telling the world, yep, I'm using this crutch. And I don't know, is that the message you want to send to the world? That's between you and yourself. Personally, I know where I stand. And you know what? Let's go for reason number 6.5. You know, this wasn't scripted, but I'm going to say it. If you take a look at your engagement, if you're using room mockup apps, you know, and once in a while you use it in order to put it into your feed, go back and take a look at the engagement that those generate. Tell me, do they generate a lot of likes? Do they generate a lot of comments? They probably don't. Because people can tell that it's fake. It, there's something about it that's not inviting. There's something about it that makes those posts underperform. I was telling you, it's easy, it's simple, it's cheap. And like while on paper, that's great. If the trade-off is lower engagement, is it really worth it? You decide. Personally, I know where I stand. So there you go. The six well now, 6.5 reasons why I hate room mockups. That was very cathartic to write and record. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't use room mockups. I'm just telling you why I hate them. Ultimately, I just don't think it's the best way to grow. Taking shortcuts to grow never really gives you the best results. You know, whenever I see them pop up in my feed, I always look at how well these posts compare with that account's other posts where they have no room mockups. And as I was telling you, they always perform lower, less engagement. People are just less likely to engage with a room mockup because they know it's fake, because it looks fake, it looks off, it's lazy, and we can tell. But you know what? There's one exception to this rule. If you're selling your art on Facebook Marketplace, it's totally okay to use room mockups as a part of your strategy. And keep an eye out because the book I'm writing on Facebook Marketplace is going pretty good. Not saying I'm almost done writing it, but I'm making great strides. So I'm hoping to release that in a few months. But if you want to know the right way to present art on Instagram, check out my book, The Art of Marketing Art on Instagram. It will teach you everything you need to know in order to become a master of presenting your art on Instagram. Presenting it through photography, presenting it through your captions, presenting it through your storytelling. That's all things that we cover. So look for the link in the show notes or head over to sebduke.com and go to the store section and grab your copy of The Art of Marketing Art on Instagram. Then read it and start growing. All right, this is where I sign off for today. As always, thank you so much for tuning in to The Seb Duke Show. I hope you make today a great day. Make sure that your art gets seen by as many people as possible. And I'll talk to you soon.